Welcome back to another Ground Up SCX24 build. And as you can see today, this is going to revolve around WT Micro's Willy truck. So this is the last remaining resin printed body for the SCX24 that he makes that I have not built. So we are going to remedy that today. So I'm going to build it on Injora's LCG carbon rail kit here. That's what this body was designed for. Its sliders work with the angle of that chassis. And you can see in the back of that body, there's a hinge. So that works as well with the chassis. So as intended, and a very affordable little chassis there. But to complete the build, we're gonna need a few other items. So I've got all those on the table here, I guess minus wheels and tires. And you know me, those always come later in the decision-making process. But the big thing here is uh, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than I usually do. We're going brushed on this one. So I've got Mofo RC's new Torque Beast X 050 can. So apparently that is just a beast of a motor. We're going to pair it with Mofo RC's 32-bit Rockwolf ESC. But uh, that's the game plan. So I think without further delay, let's jump into this guy. Let's go through some parts assemblies and see if we can't build up this beauty of the truck. Figure we should start with a quick run through of the paint and detailing here for this resin body. So not a lot of uh, prep for this guy. It's a super nice print. The only thing I usually do is sand the underside of the body and the windows here to get rid of the little bumps from the resin riser print. But I'm just very particular. You really don't even need to do that. I don't do any prep on the body as far as sanding to the outside. So just a really good quality print. Looks really nice and detailed right off the bat. So I start by washing drying it after I do that sanding and then some fine white surface primer. And then for the main body color, I did the uh, TS-88 Titanium Silver from Tamiya. And I think that turned out great. I'm going for kind of a resto mod look on this guy. So that's why I went with the black badging for the trim and the handles and the bezel. Hit the roof as well and the bed. So that's all TS6 matte black. So I think that looks really good. And then to pop all those panel lines, I use this Black It Out Detailer Liquid. Tamiya makes a panel liner as well. I'm sure there's other companies. For this, there's no applicator brush. So I just use like a little fine point brush to flow it on. And then it is water-based, so you can be sloppy and uh, just come back in like, you know, 30 seconds to a minute with uh, a wet pointed Q-tip is what I use. And then you can, you know, just basically rub along the upper portion and wipe off any excess and it leaves everything in the recesses. So that's basically how you do it. And then you just add layers to build up the darkness if you want it a little more black. So I actually did that in the rear rather than trying to paint in these little recesses. I just used panel liner and I flowed on maybe like four or five layers to darken it up. But that way I could just wipe it off real easily. If I tried to paint that and made a mistake, it would have been a lot harder to rectify that. So that's an easy way to get a little detail um, in crevices. And one cool thing about this body, it's got rear taillights. So I'm very excited about that. Didn't realize that when I uh, ordered it, but uh, I've got some ready to go for it. And then once you get it panel lined and cleaned up, you've got to seal that in because it's water-based. So I use this semi-gloss clear because it's the titanium silver. So I wanted some sheen to it. And uh, you know, I just use flat black for all these little details before I sealed it and uh, finished out the headlights with some flat aluminum there. And these look a little bug-eyed right now because they don't have the LED and they don't have the lens. So I think they're going to look nice and proper once they get all finished up. And then the lowers, I'm just leaving black because there's no lens. But uh, that's basically the body and prep work. So not a lot to it on this one. Um, much less detail to paint without that little Toyota grill that's on the FJs. So that was kind of nice on this one. You do have to uh, do a little dry brushing for that logo, but dry brushing is pretty easy. And that's raised up pretty nice on that four wheel drive. So it's not super hard to pop that and you can basically read it. Came out really nice. So uh, anyways, 
that's the paint body, that's the fun stuff. So let's jump into the rest of the parts and pieces and see how we're gonna finish this guy out. Let's run through these chassis components real quickly. So I've got two pieces here. Basically the aluminum skid is a separate thing you're gonna to need to buy. It does not come with the kit, but everything to the right of that is included. So it's a pretty robust kit. They give you uh, little shock spacers, which are super nice. Most uh, kits do not and you usually end up needing those. They also give you some cross braces as well as carbon cross trays and braces. So that's kind of cool, your option. And then uh, Velcro to mount, a battery strap, some hardware and some micro nuts. So quite a lot to work with to create your own custom LCG setup. So that is really nice. And then as far as the rails, they actually have a really nice shock setup in the back that's moved forward for a good lean. You can see the uh, skid is angled here and the WT Micro sliders take that into account because they're set up for this. And then you can see this front shock tower is moved really far back for another good angle there. So really nice little uh, affordable frame set up here. So I think now let's do a little cheating here. I think I'm gonna look back at my prior FJ build and uh, take a few notes from that. Quick look here at the FJ truck reference vehicle. So the first thing you'll probably notice is just how short the body is compared to this frame. So it is basically tip to tip here on this guy. So one of the uh, requirements in doing this is you need to use an adjustable servo mount tray which we're using from mofo and you need to use it with the servo pushed all the way back on that tray so the problem there is when you do that with these bigger servos they end up usually having a little contact with the frame with these servo mount points on the side so you can see here on this frame i rectified that by dremeling off the front mounts here since there is no bumper. So uh, fully kind of comp style front end there because there's really no need for that. And uh, the, the rear remains unchanged because it uses that stock hinge position. And then as far as the layout inside, we ought to be fairly similar component size, although we're going brushed and with a Rockwolf ESC, but it should be fairly similar as far as layout to that. So I think the first thing we need to do is get each of these frame rails trimmed up there to allow that servo clearance to happen and uh, then we can get some assembly going. Well, that doesn't look right. So I ended up uh, doing a little mock up here. So I got the little snip done on the frame and uh, hinged it and found that it would not shut here. So the sliders were getting caught on the edge. So I basically had to take the hardware out and I also popped this tray out. You can see it's gonna be exactly flush in there. So I may have to sand a little off of this guy, but uh, I basically had to fit the sliders in, kind of flexing the cab out, put a couple magnets in there to make up that height in the front to even it out. Then I came back here, made sure there was no tension and uh, screwed these both in and they seem to go in just fine with it squared up. So I'm basically letting this kind of flex the cab out and hopefully that'll, you know, begin to hold the shape a little more, but you can see there's a little more gap over here than there is here. So, you know, it's not going to be exact same print. I'm sure every time I'm sure there's a little variance here and there, but most of these builds I've had to do a little sanding on the sliders. So that may be the case here, but I also found that with the cab sitting on the sliders on most of them, they ended up uh, stretching a little and kind of loosening up the fitment. So that could be the case here. So I think with that, we're going to let this sit up and just kind of stretch out here. Um, and we'll move on to uh, axles. But uh, before we do that, one of the cool thing was kind of it's weird how you notice design intent once you start assembly. So I was wondering about these rails and why they stopped short. but. Now it's evident it was for shock clearance. So if you're using spacers or big bore shocks, so that is just super genius right there. And uh, these shock towers perfectly level out with the top of these rails. So let's drop this bed in here. So let's see, let's get that in there perfectly flat. And we flip it over, look at that. That is perfect fitment right there. So just great design 
Looks like the cab is going to sit about a millimeter up from the bottom of those sliders, but it's doing that evenly on both sides. So that's with kind of the stack of the magnets. So everything ought to be even, and it looks like it is. And you can see that nice slope of the skid there that's accounted for with those sliders. So that's why you want to use this frame, or you're going to have to come up with some way to custom mount the sliders or just not use them potentially. But I think now we're going to kind of set this aside and uh, I think we're going to get all the components and look at the actual assemblies, go ahead and get those built up. Figure before I get into any assembly here, we'd go over kind of the parts and pieces I'm going to be using for the axles. So I guess let's start with the center piece here, which will be MoFo's Black Label 2.0, aka the People Servo. So this guy is uh, just super powerful for a great value. So you can see 141 ounce inches at 8.4. So with that Rock Wolf, I believe the BEC is six and a half volts. So we'll be going a little over 104 ounce inches with it. So still plenty of power with that guy. And all of his servos now come with your choice of an aluminum or brass adjustable servo mount. So I've got a brass one here for a little added weight up front. Got some Injora bearings and some spring steel V2 CVDs from MoFo. And those are to fill in this front brass axle housing from Poor Boys RC. So I will not be using the rear out of the set. I'll save that for something else. But I've got an axial plastic housing built up ready to go from the factory. And I'll be pairing that up with a Ramp Crab two-piece adjustable aluminum link riser. So that's another new favorite item there really handy. You can see I've got my rolled up sandpaper because last time on these poor boys housings, I had to sand out the bearing race on the ends of the axles and in the diff cover. So that's my assumption again here. And then out at the knuckles, we've got some black brass knuckles from the little guy. And these are really unique. They've got no kingpin bushing. You can see the hardware head is kind of deepened and widened there. So that's basically a built-in kingpin bushing. So these do not stick up or down out of that knuckle. They sit flush. So that's a really great design. And then for the gearing, we've got some 213T, which is 23% overdrive from Injora. And then to round it out, we've got some stainless steel links from Maz Designs. So we'll need to assemble those uh, steering links right off the bat to get this guy going. But that's... Uh, the parts and pieces here shouldn't be too complex. Most of the work is going to be the front axle. So I'll get this assembled and then we'll move forward. Okay, back with a little axle update here. So the front assembly went together pretty easy. Um, the passenger side went on uh, perfectly. There's a little up and down wiggle on that knuckle. Super floppy, great connection. The trouble I had was the driver's side. So. A little bit of binding with both of the uh, pieces of hardware tightened down and you can see they should all tighten fully down and they sit a little recessed in there. So with those both tightened down I had a lot of binding over here on this driver's side so I took the knuckle off, ran some long hardware through both connections here on the axle and the, uh, the top connection was out of plumb in this direction. In this direction they were still aligned so it was just the hole got tapped a little off. So that was putting a little pressure on this. So what I had to do was take a normal piece of hardware that was a little bit longer and uh, put some Loctite on it and then back it out to where it's flush here. Make sure it wasn't uh, poking through and hitting that CVD. So nothing is uh, coming through there. That's clear, there's good rotation. So that's still flushed out. And so you can see on the table that's the size hardware I used and then you can see the little shorty that comes with it so you don't have enough length on that one to back it out a little bit to relieve a little pressure on that knuckle so that's why I went to the longer uh, just normal piece of hardware but that seems to work just fine so uh, let's talk about these links let's just run through a few little assembly tips on these Mazda signs links so they do have three different type rod ends and I mentioned that before so they've got an angled rod end with a smooth collar an angled rod end with a hex collar, and then they actually have a straight rod end with a hex collar. So the two straights, or the three straights actually, are at the servo horn and at the uh, steering link. Then you've got an angled with a hex at your drag link 
end right there. And then the smooth collar angled ends are all gonna go at your skid plate. So they are smooth collars, so they don't have anything to hang up at that skid. And then you've got the hex angled ones at the uh, axle end here. And then for your uh, uppers, all of those are gonna be the angled with the hex collar. So the way you install those is you wanna install them opposite of each other. And so I can pick one of these up without all these coming off. I found a great new use for all these spare uh, Allen wrenches. So you can see how they're set up there. So they're opposite each other and they set the uh, links up going in the right direction. Well, didn't make it long without dropping one, but you get the idea there. So it's nice to have these to set them up and kind of make sure they're all uh, opposite each other. And a quick way I found to pop these uh, little balls in is set them on the, the large flange down. And I always pop the, uh, the balls in the same way in these guys, just for consistency. So I think I always put kind of the angle downward and then if you just cap it over and you've got one of these little tools you can just pop it right down there super easy and then uh, the hardest part I've found is actually getting the thread started in these guys you got to put quite a bit of pressure and make sure they're squared up to get them going and then once you've got them barely on there I take uh, two of these on each end and just twist them up so it makes it super easy but uh, those are the notes on the link. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these guys assembled and then we'll go from there. All right, got the rest of the links assembled and uh, make sure you lay them out side by side and compare the links because you can uh, definitely tighten them down unevenly. So make sure and check they're all the same. And then I did have to use the rolled up sandpaper. I forgot to mention that on the, uh, just the diff cover and the uh, axle bearing there for that diff. The uh, axle ends dropped in just fine, so uh, not much of an issue there. And then, uh, of course, I got the Ramp Crab link riser on here. And uh, man, I just love that thing. It's got a little utter butter grease in them, so I think we are good to go on the axle assemblies for now. One thing I'll mention on this servo horn, it is a bear to get on there. I can barely get it started, so I'm just going to leave it off until we get that servo powered on and centered because once it's pressed on, it may not come off. But uh, anyways, we'll see what's next here. Time to get into the guts of this build. So as we saw earlier, we've got this uh, nice Torque Beast X 30,000 RPM in the uh, black chrome case from Mofo RC. He offers this in a 20,000 RPM as well which would be a little bit slower than stock. So uh, this has the nice signature low profile side exit soldered motor wires. So that's something uh, Mofo always does on his brush motors, which makes it really nice compared to the typical rear exiting wires that can get in the way, especially on an 050 can. So to pair up to that, I've got this nice already assembled fully metal transmission, metal gear, and uh, it looks like sealed bearings there as well. So this feels really nice and tight. This is from uh, Poor Boys RC. So it's funny, they, uh, they really just advertise the transmission assembly and then in the description, it's like, it comes with a motor. <laughs> so I'm gonna just toss this little guy. I'm assuming this is a no-namer little junk motor, but we've got something much, much better to pop in there. And this should be 3S capable, no problem, possibly 4S. It's got insane magnets in it. It's super heavy. Let's just uh, pick this whole assembly up with it. But uh, from what I've seen, what I've heard, this motor is just outstanding. It just should be the uh, best of the best as far as brushed goes. So can't wait to get that guy in. So I'm gonna get this mounted up and meshed and then uh, we may have to do a little more chassis assembly and figure out which direction we're going to mount this guy. Quick tip on this uh, transmission assembly. So uh, this spur gear output shaft had quite a bit of wobble in it. So I ended up having to swap out the bearings that it came with, which uh, were not sealed, but I did have some little small guys in there that are maybe fast eddies. They're little sealed bearings. So 
That took out some of the wobble, most of it. You can see there's still a little bit of wobble in that output shaft, but it's much better. And I think I've got a nice mesh. It's a little hard to tell when the whole assembly can wobble like that, but the, the drive shaft output is nice and tight. So that that's a good connection. So we'll just have to see how this works. Um, hopefully that'll be all right. The uh, motor plate's nice. It's got the crisscross mounting option, but not required with MoFo's motors. It, they're all set up for the stock mounting plate position. So uh, anyways, other than that, it's a nice uh, weighty little assembly there, especially with that motor with the heavy magnets on there. So I'm gonna get that buttoned up and uh, may see about how we're gonna mount that guy. I decided to go ahead and get my shocks filled with oil and as I got to my last shock, I realized, you know, maybe I'll take you guys through this. I've been asked this question before, how do you fill these guys? So we'll just fill this last one on camera. So these, I've said before, are my favorite shocks, these aluminum threaded long travel. So they're about the perfect length and uh, they have some really nice features here to them. So the first of which is gonna be this little uh, seal under the cap. So you can see it's got like a little nipple on it there instead of just an O-ring. So that helps press the air out when you actually uh, screw this guy down, helps bleed it out. So uh, a nice feature there. So the first thing I do is get this collar down and that's just so I can get a good grip right here. And I'm gonna be using 30 weight oil. And the way I start with this is I get them compressed and then I like to use kind of the suction of the shock to actually pull the oil in as I uh, pour it. So I'll see if I can do this on camera. And it does get messy, so uh, be ready for that. So you're going to get some oil in there and then you're going to want to slowly get the air out. So you're going to cycle it down and you're usually going to see some air bubbles and uh, they'll come to the surface and just pop. There you go. So you kind of get that air out of the first round and then repeat. Not bad, this big spout on this bottle. Sometimes it all just jumps out on you. Definitely a, a messy job, but not too hard to do. Let's see if it's a purpose again. Like the spring is causing it to focus. Nope, oh, overflowed it a little. It's alright, expected. Just gonna get all that out of the way here so it'll focus a little bit better. It's usually gonna take three or four pours. Like I say, once you see it coming out, I like to cycle it up and let it kind of suck the oil in. Because if you try to pour it in, there's typically, it's just gonna spill over because there's air in there. Looks like we still got a little air bubble in there. It's hard to tell. There it is. Just took a while for that one to pop. So you basically don't want to have any air in the shock when you seal it up because that air will not compress. So that's what will lock your shock up. So you want to just fill it with enough oil that that piston can cycle through the oil and the oil slows it down. I think we're almost there. Because you really just have to get it full when you're compressed.
I'm just gonna put a little elbow in there and make it spill over the side, it looks like. I may have done it right there. I'm not seeing that air bubble creep up. It looks like the oil's crusting nicely. So you don't want to go fast and spill that oil over. So it looks like we're ready to uh, cap it here. That we've got all the air out. So uh, you know, just slowly compress it, and then you'll see that oil kind of crest, and it's going to spill over once you cap it and screw this on. So you're screwing it down and that little nipple is pressing the air out. It's also pressing into that hardware head. So it's helping force out the air. So just screw it on as tight as you can here and that's it. You're gonna be tempted to wanna to tighten it down once you let off because you can give it a little more turn but you don't need to. You've already got that seal. So these come with the medium springs in there and so the next really nice feature about these let me spin this guy back up here is how you change the spring so typically when you fill oil shocks you've got to pull the top back off to change the spring but look at that it's got the bottom spring retainer so that makes it just super convenient so let me grab, grab my uh, black one here this is the soft to slide it on and then this thing is slotted here if I can get a hold of it you can see there so you just slot it slip it on put it down drop the spring and then center the spring in there and we are good so we have a nice slow cycling soft rate spring in there so just that easy and uh, repeat three more times and you've got four but uh, like i say i've already done them so that uh that was the process now that we got a little 30 weight in those shocks i've got the frame torn apart and i'm looking at some uh, fitment here so you can see i've got it facing the rearward typical position here so i looked at it forward facing and because this uh skid slopes it ends up putting that long can pretty low in the front and so that potentially is going to really hinder the upper link travel. So looking at it from the rear and mocking in a uh, link here, let's see if I can sit this in, I can get a good idea of my travel. And it looks like, let's see if I can get that in there just perfect. Looks like I'm going to get pretty close to what I've got with the little FJ truck. I think I can get a little more parallel to that tray with the truck, but this is still pretty good. And uh, you, you can always get better clearances the longer your links are because your angle is not as extreme. So with those front links being shorter, it's also harder to, uh, to get full compression. So let's take a quick look at this guy. So this has the BAM, which sits higher but it sits a little further forward, I believe, than that 050 would. But you can see the uppers. They get right to the BAM, like right, stop right before they touch it. And you can see they go right, angle up to that little hole there. So that's kind of what I was looking at and test fitting that motor forward. And then uh, for the rear, again, it's pretty easy to see. Those uh, uppers there get almost parallel to the frame. Let me open the body here. We can see that a little bit better. So yeah, they're basically parallel to the frame. So looks like we're going to be about there maybe with that 050 can. Not necessarily parallel, but still that's pretty, uh, pretty low. Like right here, we're actually sitting that axle on the frame. So that's as low as it can go. So anyways, I think that's the best way to probably go with that long can and then another thing I noticed on that setup with the sliders as you can see on these sliders how tall they are and they basically cover up all the upper link riser positions on the back and the front there even though you can't see them on the front but uh, so you basically always have to use those uh, stock lower positions so that's a little tweak here 
on these sliders, notice that right off the bat that on the rears you do have access to those uppers. Of course, they're not going to be usable with this motor, but uh, the front you almost have access. You could dremel out some of this uh, slider pretty easily at the top and use those, but for me on the front, I want to go the furthest lowest to lean the servo back so I don't need them. And on the rear, we can use the stock position because I've got that adjustable link riser for the diff cover. So I can still get a little uh, anti-squat there at the rear with that. So I think this is the direction we're going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and get the whole chassis mocked up, assembled, get some shocks on there, and uh, we'll kind of check the clearances here. Quick note on the uh, link install here. So you end up with one extra smooth collar. And so I've got a hex here. So I end up replacing the hex on this upper at the can with a smooth collar. And that gives me more travel. You can see the collar is what actually comes in contact with the 050. So that hex was spacing me up about there. So that's a nice little option there. So you end up with one of those smooth angled ones as a spare and I've got quite a few because I've got several link sets from Maz but you should be able to do a little fine tuning at least with that one but uh, another thing here if you're not using these sliders if this was not a WT build and you're using an 050 you can see there are lower mounts so you could scoop this guy back and potentially clear this can quite a bit better but we can't do that obviously because we would have to drill basically right through the slider so it get all nasty i don't want to do that so i think we're going to leave it like that but just a little tip there on that uh, clearance back a little progress and man this thing is starting to shape up here so i've got the uh, slider complete and i went ahead and uh, popped the body on there just to make sure everything was all good and i did have to make a few tweaks once i did that Let's take a look here and see that shock clearance at the uh, bed. So originally I had some wide spacers and you can see I've got some kind of narrow little black plastic spacers in there now. The shock hardware was about to scrape the bed. So I kind of flip flopped it. I put the wide spacers at the axle and that uh, gave me a little more room there. But you can see those cutouts are perfect there to give you just a little more clearance at those shock towers. So uh, everything feels good. These shocks are just cushy. I love these things. Let's get a little weight on here. Just so nice. So soft. So uh, another thing that I noticed, this body has been sitting on the chassis uh, now for a few days here. So it looks like it has stretched out nicely. Let me get the cords out of the way. So now it is hinging closed and it's seating on those sliders just perfectly. So that all works out great. So I think now let me uh, take this hardware off. I'll pull the body off and we'll take a closer look at that slider setup. All right, let's start off at the front here. So the first thing, let's look at the caster. So you can see that servo is kicked back, axles kicked forward. So the first thing I did before I installed these lower links was unthread each rod end a couple of turns to lengthen those guys. And that basically set my servo and my caster. So once you get that servo set, you can check the clearance kind of to the tray here, and that is gonna set your shock position at max compression. So you can see I'm on that top row, one position forward. Then you're gonna to wanna to use spacers anytime you use these uh, carbon frames and lean your shocks because you've got such a long surface that your shock rides along. So you can only use uh, skinnies here at the bottom so i've got the ones that it came with those little spacers and that's because of uh, knuckle clearance here so if you use anything that kicks those out you're going to limit your steering so i wanted to get the full potential of these cvds so just kicking those out barely a little bit uh, wider spacer at the top that's an injora aluminum spacer there but that basically gets these guys uh, off of the frame so at full twist, you can see I'm clear of that with the spring and the collar. So nice, nice smooth movement right there. And that's what you want. So front end worked out so well, I was able to put in their little uh, aluminum cross brace in the provided hole. And you can see that sits right on top of my uppers. 
So that's bump stopping those as the shocks bump stop right before the servo bump stops the tray. So everything is working out perfect. And it looks like the top of that servo, once I get the magnet stacked, is gonna be right there, perfect at the hood. So very happy with the front end. And I've got all of this space free to potentially put in another tray up front for uh, mounting electronics or battery. But uh, that's the front end. So the rear, pretty straightforward. I had to lose the ramp crab adjustable link riser. That again was due to the length of this can. So earlier we swapped out to this smooth rod end to get a little more clearance to that can. So we want to touch it. So we are with the link, we're hitting it. So that's setting the full up travel. So that set the shock position. But you can imagine if I had that link riser, that would push the axle down because the links can't get any taller right here. So removing that solved the problem. My uppers are right there at the tray. So if the drive shaft has any conflict with the tray, I can modify that down the road. Already had to do a little mod there for the wire connection at the motor. But other than that, smooth sailing there on the rear. Everything is sitting nice and low and even at full compression. So very happy with the slider thus far. Okay, got this uh, motor ready to test. So as you saw, I did a little soldering, got my micro receiver ready to go. So now I've gone and done a little programming to this Rockwolf ESC. So I did call Nick at Mofo RC just to confirm the instructions on how to do that. So it's really easy and he's got instructions on his site on how to get into the config tool. So I'll put uh, kind of the graphics of the screens up in the process, but it's really easy. You just navigate to the flash tab. You're going to have to load the brush software to the program. And then you hit another button to actually flash the Rockwell VSC and then it's done. And uh, of course I did set the low voltage cutoff on this guy as well because that doesn't come preset. And then once you reflash it, you still have all the same basic settings as you did on brushless. So none of that changes. So I didn't adjust anything. I just set the low voltage after I flashed it. So I have gone ahead and bound this. So we're gonna uh, give it a little spin here. And he did warn me that because these magnets are so massive that there is some lag on the throttle pull that it's got to get a little juice to get those guys going. Oh yeah, so I can, I can pull the throttle a little bit before it engages and then it kicks in there. Sounds nice and, nice and smooth here. So same in reverse, so you gotta put a little bit of throttle on it. Let's see if I can get this here. So I start the pull. So it's almost like you've got your, uh, if this was Fury Tech, it's almost like you had your throttle pull set to wide. So it gave you a lot of slack there. But uh, it seems like the mesh is good. The motor sounds good. So I'm going to get these drive shafts installed and then we can give it a little spin up and uh, make sure the motor is turning the right direction with everything connected. But uh, a note on the drive shafts, you're going to need to provide your own JLU front uh, female that does not come with the short medium drive shaft set. It comes with the deadbolt instead. So we're going to swap that little joint over here and then it comes with the deadbolt and the C10 rear. So we just need to swap the joint over to the C10 and we'll have both the JLU C10 front and rear ready to install. Quick shot here as I'm breaking in this motor, I've got the throttle rate uh, or the trim turned up here really high. I had to get it up to like 89. Let's see if I back it down. So it cut off at 86. So let me bring it back up. Yeah, last 
last time it took, I think, in the hundreds to get it spinning. And that may be, it seems like a little more this time, maybe due to the amount of juice in the battery. But like I say, I'm at 114 right now to get it going, and then I can back it down. So once it's got some momentum and it's spinning, it's like you can slow it. But to get it actually spinning, get those magnets turning initially, it takes quite a bit of juice. You can kind of hear it. We're getting down to the low end. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so it just cut out. It doesn't have enough power right now. So anyways, uh, I think I've got that broken in enough, but just wanted to show you that cool motor. Back to the little progress here. So I got those drive shafts installed. No issues there. Those actually dropped in without having to actually disconnect the axles, which is always nice having a little bit of slack to do that. And then as you can see, I went ahead and got the remaining body pieces glued in. So the bed, the roof, the headlight bezels, and the magnets, all of that was shoe goo. And then for the lenses, I used this clear parts cement from uh, Tamiya, but I'm sure there's other companies that make something similar. And I just take an X-Acto and put a little bit around that inside edge of the bezel and then place those lenses with tweezers. And pay attention on those lenses because they do have lines on them, so you want to get those running horizontal most likely, at least I do. So. Not much left here. We've got wheels and tires, but uh, before that, we need to get some electronics installed. Well, that was easy. So as you saw, these guys went in, no problem. Plenty of space here. Ended up running the uh, ESC at the back on the tray. And due to the length of that motor wire and where I could plug it in and situate it, ended up running it kind of uh, vertically or parallel to the frame there, I guess, more so. And then the battery is gonna ride opposite the motor. And then the ESC is sitting there, queued up on that slider. And it's got a couple of free plugs there, and those are going to come in handy for the uh, front headlights and the rear tail lights. So that is remaining. So I think we're going to tackle that next, and then we'll look at wheels and tires. All right, got these LEDs wrapped up, and man, not too hard at all. No switch on these or anything, not a lot of room for something like that on a build like this. So let's take a look under the hood here. So you can see all the slack here. I think this is all for the tail lights, And then the headlights really didn't have much slack. Both of those tuck under this bar. So that keeps everything nice and low there, and it routes it to the side, so really clean really low there, and then you've got to leave yourself a little slack here for that hinge, but you can see how I've got it kind of folding on itself there. So it should uh, kind of fold up and keep everything tight to the bottom of the bed here. So let's take a quick look underneath. So you can see that slack. Yeah, it's basically all sitting there on the bed. So pretty clean. And the lights sure look good as you saw. And I'm loving those tail lights. Nice, uh, nice little upgrade versus the FJ truck, uh, not having them super cool. I kind of, kind of wish these were red as far as the lenses, but uh, maybe that's more of a resto mod to have them clear. I don't know. Either way, they look great lit up. So I think with that, we are done with electronics and lighting. So you know what that means. We're moving on to wheels and tires. We're gonna get 
something on the ends of these axles. Before we get any wheels and tires on, I wanted to go over this front clearance. You can see that lower light here and then the servo horn, and this is not even full compression. So we get down to full compression and we're right there in line with it, with that servo horn. So when you turn full lock drivers, you can see that hardware is right there and it's actually tagging it and sliding off. If we come straight down, we miss it. But you can see there's, you know, obviously some slop in the suspension. So I've got these LEDs clocked out of 45 and the wires kind of coming this way up to the fender, but they have a rectangular block kind of back box. And so that puts that at an angle. So it lets that piece of hardware slide off of it like that. So just a little detail there in mounting it that may help you out with clearances, but it is super, super tight there very close clearances the uh, passenger side there's really no problem with the drag link it's really just that hardware head over here and of course the servo is moved all the way back um, i did kick out the axle and move that forward but that shouldn't have done too much because at the same time we're leaning everything back so anyways just something to note there on that front kind of headlight clearance there with the servo horn so I think now let's jump into wheels and tires. Well, we're going to be doing this wheel and tire segment just a little different than normal. So you can see I've got quite a bit here out on the table. Been doing a lot of test fitting and tire swapping on this uh, wheelie truck to see what fits. And I really just needed a break from all of that. So you can see I've got the FJ truck in the background. So initially in planning this wheelie truck, I did all my tire wheel fitment on this because it's got the same stock width axles, but I made one little error and I didn't account for the tucked bed. So at the wheel that gives you uh, maybe four or five more millimeters per side. So quite a bit of noticeable clearance there. And that really comes in to play on a, you know, a full extension twist here. So that's where I started having some issues with what I planned for this initially. So I had to go back to the drawing board, dig into my tire stash, wheel stash, and see what I had that would work. So initially I had these uh, wheels that I showed, I guess maybe a wheel episode ago, these new Enron, these are off of Amazon. So I was planning on these guys and uh, I really initially wanted to use the new Falcon Wild Peaks on those, but these guys I think are around the 56 range, so a little bit taller. But uh, as you can see, the offset here would not allow for that. So I ended up going to little BFGs. So these are just the, uh, the KM3s, I think, just the normal width. And you can see I'm still just touching right there and it like full, full compression. Yeah, just barely kissing it there. And that is with some little Samix plus one hexes, so they're four millimeters, so they kick these out just a little bit more. So that helped for a little bit of tuning, but uh, in wanting to still run these new Falcon Wild Peaks, I really needed a wheel with more offset. So I started looking around and I couldn't find anything. So I went back to the FJ truck alternates so you can see it's got these nice bronze deep dish OGRC wheels it also had these deep dish black OGRC wheels with uh, these super swampers mounted up so I think I'm gonna rob these guys from that and uh, put them on this so I can get the offset I need to clear the bed and it looks like it's gonna work at the front and at full kind of twist compression I think I'm just getting into the fender and uh, kind of getting into the nose here just a little bit but overall i think that is going to work there it gives it a little bit wider stance because of the offset of that wheel but uh liking that and really happy to use these new wild peaks so kind of a new style tire for this uh, resto mod and then of course the initial wheel i always wanted to use on this is back here on the rear so it's this guy so this is a DJ crawler wheel I've had for a while. It is actually matte black and then the edges are polished. So I thought that would work really well with the paint scheme 
and again more of a modern type uh, wheel but again this guy sit in so far that I ended up having to go to a really skinny small size tire here so this is a, a pit bull rocker so this is another tire I've had for a long time it's the alien compound from them and it's a really soft sticky compound but it comes with super stiff foams so I've got crawler innovations foams swapped into these I think I've got a half of a foam in each of these and I always do mediums in the rear and soft in the front on kind of the normal weight builds. So that's kind of three right there. So two wheels I wanted to use initially and then one tire I wanted to use initially. And then of course, since I stole that wheel off the FJ truck, I had this other brand new set of OGRC bronze deep dish wheels. So I went ahead and mounted these up to those super swampers and uh, popped them on here and you know what a surprise again bronze seems to go with just about every color so these are looking pretty good against that titanium silver so I think these may actually be a wild card for this guy as well as a alternate set for the FJ truck and of course it's the same OGRC bronze color that is on that FJ truck now so those are going to work well on either vehicle so I think right now I've got multiple sets that could potentially work on either truck now because the small size tires should work on that FJ truck. So anyways, enough talk here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mount up these uh, few remaining that I need to swap for the OGRC. And then we'll take a look at full sets on the truck and it won't look so goofy with one of each. Quick note as I'm mounting up these OGRC wheels, I'll just mention they have the uh, Phillips head hardware little screws. They are the same thread, so you can use longer screws as starter screws, which you will need to if you have these black OGRC wheels. They come with like two and a half millimeter hardware. It's ridiculous how short it is, but it looks like they've rectified that on the bronze wheels. They've got longer hardware that actually reaches, so you can use that, and they've got the little stubbies for the hub. But I think that was the same on those bronze wheels as well. They had longer hardware, so just something to know. Any way you go with OGRC, you're going to have the little Phillips heads to deal with. But uh, setting up the foams here, you can see this uh, Wild Peaks nice and stretched out. So I've got a full uncut soft Crawl Innovations foam in there, a green one but it's basically the same width as this white one uncut and you can see this little skinny is what it comes with really really firm foam as far as RC four wheel drive and uh, I think that's really because this is just a super floppy tire it's the S2X3 compound but there's not a giant lug so it's just really soft so I think it's there to give that sidewall support so I think a full foam is going to work in those little skinnies just fine but uh, anyways I'm going to finish mounting these up I just thought I'd let you in on that tip on these wheels all right I figured I'd start with the uh, biggest set here so we've got the OGRC deep dish wheels with the negative offset and we've got these larger new style Falcon Wild Peak tires on here so I was kind of debating if I like that polished lip on the wheels, but it seems to work pretty well with the polished uh, link on the front and of course the links underneath as well. So let me size this guy up here and we'll look at the clearances real quick. So on full twist, looks like we're kind of into the fender there a little bit and barely touching that shock. And then we'll check on twist in this direction. It looks like we're going to just kiss that fender right there, but not too bad. But the critical, critical clearances, of course, on this guy that I was worried about. And the reason we went to these negative offset wheels is these larger tires and the bed clearance. So let's get it at full twist. Look at that. We are just kissing the fender. So that is going to work perfectly. So very happy. That I was able to get these tires on a rim that would fit them to the truck quite well but overall very happy with these and these tires are still just super soft with a full little Nova foam in them and they are vented rings it's a slow vent 
but uh, they feel really good. So hopefully they will perform just as well. But that is the first set. Next up, we've got the RC four wheel drive BFG KM3s. Very classic uh, tire mounted up to a very classic style wheel. These are the black new Enron, I guess, vintage wheels. But uh, those look really good. I think that's a pretty sick combo there. Still gives a little of the uh, Resto Mod touch, being that these are glossy wheels, but it does give you that vintage kind of era look in the styling. So at clearances, it looks like we're just touching that shock, but we're barely getting into the fender, so that's nice here. So at full twist, we're missing that fender edge. So that's perfect there on the front end, not bad at all. So the critical is going to be the rear, of course, so let's check that. So at full twist, perfect. We're just kissing that fender, but we can still rotate. So it looks like that set is going to work out well as far as clearances, and they uh, definitely look good. They feel really good. The tires are vented, and I've got a half of a Crawler Innovations foam in these guys. But uh, these BFGs look really good on a slightly wider rim, just stretching them just a hair. They end up looking really mean. But I think these definitely uh, are a good option for the vehicle. Definitely look great, and uh, that's kind of the mid-size tire, so I guess we're going to step down one more size to the tiniest. Here we are with the smallest tire option. We've got the Pitbull Rockers mounted up to the DJ Crawler 5-spoke matte black wheels. So I think these look really good. Definitely give it that Resto Mod appearance with the rims. And uh, these tires feel super nice with the Alien Compound. Let's take a look at these clearances. So I've got a half of a Crawler Innovations foam in all of these, and they're vented, so they've got a really nice squish to them. So it looks like we are missing the shock, and at full twist, are we gonna make this? Look at that, we are just kissing the fender right there, just barely, so not bad at all. And this way, let's check it. Looks like we're actually gonna miss the fender. So just perfect there with this size tire on the front. So let's take a look at the rear, but man, it looks good. It's so sick. Get that down level. Just loving these shocks. Super cushy. Let's stretch it out. Boom. So on the rear, let's check the clearance. So you can see the tight offset here. It's that full twist. And we are just right there at the fender. So any wider, taller, we would be just mashing into it. So I think these fit perfectly for what we needed on these wheels to get them to work with this guy on the stock width axles. But man, super happy with the look of these. I think these may be my favorites on here thus far. I think they give it the uh, appropriate resto mod look for sure. So I think let's take a look at those bronze wild cards next. Last up, we've got the RC four-wheel drive TSL Narrows mounted up to the bronze six-spoke OGRC deep dish wheels. So this is the wild card, if you will, and I think they look really good. That bronze definitely seems to work with the titanium silver just fine, at least for me. I don't know what you think, but uh, I don't have a problem with it. Definitely like the chunky six spoke with these kind of knobby TSL side biters. I think that's a good, a good aesthetic right there. So let's check the clearances here. So at full twist, touching that fender, and uh, it looks like we're probably going to be barely touching the shock there. So let's see the nose. So at the nose at full twist, we're actually pretty good. We're just barely touching it. So not bad. But uh, definitely kind of a gnarly look there. A little more aggressive with these tires. But uh, let's check the rear. Definitely looks like these wheels stick out quite a bit, similar to those black OGRC. So I think we're gonna have plenty of space. Oh yeah, we actually clear everything just fine with these. So we could go a little bit wider tire for sure, even maybe a little taller, but uh, I think that is going to set this up with 
three nice sets and a killer uh, wild card right here. So I think that does it for wheels and tires. Okay, figured since we got the wheels on, go ahead and get a battery in here, do a little spin up, make sure there's no binding with these wheels on, and give me a little uh, longer to look at these bronze wheels, see if I uh, like them with the paint. And man, I think they're settling in nicely. So 23% ought to be about five and a half turns on that front wheel to come back to even. So let's see here. Let's see if I can creep this up. One, two, three, four. There it is. Looks like five and a half. Oh, that's, it's a jumpy start. Yeah, five and a half. So looks like that checks out. Um, let's check the binding here. Looks like the knobs are getting into the lower fender there. But uh, still smooth. Steering looks good. So it looks like everything is checking out. So I think now let's get this guy on the scales, check the weights, and then get it on the table, have a little fun. Time for a little tabletop fun. See if I can refine my driving style with this motor a little bit. Let's so get up this. Oh, there we go. Alien compound starting to drip. There it is, right on up. We're getting hung up on the belly a little. We have to work our way around it a little. So we can come down the back. Nice. bad there. Part of the challenge is just me learning to control the trigger pull on this motor. So let's uh, check the articulation. But those lights look great. Nice flex. Let's check this RTI ramp here. Looks like we're on the ground in the back. So we are all the way at the top. So pretty good flex. And we are just slipping by the fender right there. So that is working well. Yeah. Perfect tiny tires. Stuck. No, we didn't. We can't get stuck with all this torque. There's just no way. Let's see. see if we can get these tires to grab. Almost. There it is, right there. And that's where we high center, right there. Gonna have to creep it and take it to the side. Very nice. I'm telling you, this thing is a little tricky to get that trigger pull down. But you can you can get a slow crawl. It's just 
It takes a little bit of practice here to get it done. Finish this out with a nice low shot and get a nice good look at these uh, headlights. Nice, I'm getting a little bit better with that trigger pull. I feel like I want to try that one more time. See if I can get it continuous without stopping. Almost, almost made it, but I tell you what, it's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to that Torque Beast X motor, but man, talk about torque for days. I feel like you could just snap something super easy with this motor. So I think that is probably going to wrap this uh, portion of the tabletop testing up, but man, this guy is just gorgeous. Loving the lights. Loving the paint and loving the performance of it so far. So I think that is going to do it for this segment. Well, here we are at the end of another build. And I think this guy came out fantastic. I'm loving every option of uh, wheel tire that we've got here. I think all of them work super well with the theme and the coloration of this guy. And I actually feel like I'm being tortured because as soon as we finished here, got all the wheels and tires set up, went through that whole rodeo, a big shipment of wheels and tires arrived. And there's a certain set here that have me very interested. And these are brand new from Maz Designs. These are his Vader wheels. So this is the raw finish, which just looked gorgeous. This is the bronze with the black ring also fantastic looking and the ones that really have me uh, thinking for this build are these matte black so these just look super retro i think these would fit the bill perfectly problem is i don't have any more tiny tiny tires on hand because these are going to have a offset very similar to these they're going to sit in so you may see some more uh rims and tires on this willy truck in the future but uh, for now i think we are wrapped up with this guy and uh man it is just killer looking and i do think these are probably my favorite uh wheel tires on here i'm just for some reason digging these little bitty tiny tires and this little narrow track width i just think it looks super good on this short wheelbase truck and uh, just all the little details. I love the black trim on this one. I think that really pops against that titanium silver and the bezels. And uh, man, like I mentioned earlier, just loving those taillights. But overall, I think this thing is just a fantastic build. So I definitely recommend picking up a WT Micro Willy truck or any WT Micro SCX24 body because they are all fantastic. If you've got a TRX4M, he makes a couple as well for that platform. But uh, with that said, I think that is going to do it for this one. So as always, I hope you uh, enjoyed the process. Thank you for coming along with me on it. Hope you learned something. This one was uh, definitely a fun one. Not too many new things, but a fun new motor to kind of play around with. So definitely going to take a little bit of uh, getting used to that guy um, as a try it out. So. With that said, until next time, thanks for watching.